so um, I'm going to repeat what uh, what uh, other speakers already said. So it's not going to be that original. Um, I'm here to share my story with you. <laughs> this is one of uh, um, of the repetitions, and another one uh, is with um, what what the uh, student said. Um, I'm very much into uh, books online, and I don't like carrying books to school because they are too heavy, and I don't want my students to carry books with them. So um, this is why I'm here, and this is why I'm um, I do what I do as an open teacher. Um, uh, my name is Aga and I have been a teacher for 22 years. Um, um, I have to tell you that there are 15 teachers in my family. Uh, my mom is a teacher, so um, probably the fact is that I have been a teacher all my life. Right. Um, when I started uh, as a teacher, I didn't really uh, realize what it was um, to to teach. I just had the experience as a student, and I had the, in my imagination I had this uh, vision that I was going just to repeat what other teachers did before, um, and it was a disaster. Um, after several years of teaching in school, and I have to tell you, I teach in the school where I used to be a student. And the school where I teach uh, employs, like, I don't know, 30% of teachers are those who used to go to that school. So I have this theory about, you know, them being the victims of the system and staying uh, in the system to uh, not being able to break out of it. Me too. Um, so, well, after several years of teaching, uh, when I had to use course books in school, uh, I had to use the course books that I had been using when I was a student. And I still teach from course books that are older than most of my students, that are older than my whole uh, career as a teacher. I have to use those course books because they are imposed on me as a teacher by my authorities. So um, you, you have, you know, probably you, you can imagine what it fe feels like when you come to the same classroom and you have like a hundred of students uh, circling in, into your classroom every day and they, you have to teach from the same course book for, for so many years. You know, you're just born out, yeah? So I did that. I mean, it happened to me. Um, I was so unhappy with, um, with teaching that um, I was... I, I felt my students were bored in my class because I was bored, yes? So I was like looking for some solution to deal with it. And then what happened was the internet, yes? Uh, the internet and the social media arrived. So um, the thing was that this, is, this was the space where I started looking for um, uh, communication for building relationships with my students uh, because it wasn't that possible in the classroom since I had those course books. I had to use and you know all the tests and and do the cur curriculum and stuff. So I um, I went online with my students and we started um, creating materials for uh, the materials that my students liked, the materials that my students uh, could express themselves in, uh, the materials that um, they could share with each other, um, that we could build up a repository of uh, materials for my students that could that could replace. Uh, books at that time. Um, and I got myself a computer, I bought it with my own salary, okay, and I could like make my own materials, make my own tests, and I was so happy with those tests I made because they were like my own, but I was really shy to share them with other teachers, okay? I, w I wasn't like, um, I didn't go to my staff room and show them to other teachers, um, I showed them to one of my colleagues maybe, uh, but I wasn't. Uh, I was afraid to show the materials, to share the materials, because I wasn't sure whether they were good enough, uh, whether um, there were mistakes in them. Okay, so this was this was it. This was what happened. In this, I can. I'm telling you uh, about all, about all this from my own experience. Um, now it's 20, 20 years forward. Yes, I am. I'm talking about the the whole experience with twenty years of. Um, of teaching in mind, and and what I have to tell you is that nothing really has changed. I'm afraid, <laughs> not much has changed. I mean, in my school, for example, when when we when I think about teachers in in my uh, staff room, um, they okay, they are online. They go online to search for materials, but they are ready. They are more willing to use ready-made materials from publishing houses than creating their own materials, or maybe. Uh, borrowing or using materials made by other teachers. 
Okay? So why, why the case? Why after 20 years, not so much has changed? Well, the thing is, um, when I think of my teachers and I asked a group of um, teachers, you mentioned Super Belfsche, I will tell you about them in a moment. Uh, I asked them yesterday, why? Why do you think teachers are not willing to share? Um, they mentioned several reasons, several factors. One of the factors is that they have very low self-esteem. Okay? They, um, they are not sure whether what they have produced is worth sharing or whether they have made mistakes or not. And they are very scared of making mistakes. Okay? Because teachers are not supposed to make mistakes and they are not supposed to uh, admit that they have made a mistake. Right? So they don't want to share the materials because they just want, they want to get critical comments on them. Yes? They don't want their self-esteem to get even lower. Okay? So this is why they don't do that. Another reason is that um, why should we do anything for free? Yes? There is a group of teachers who, who just don't want to share whatever they have because they believe that they have spent enough time preparing. Um, they have uh, like devoted a lot of their free time to to create the materials, so why should they just give them for free to somebody who's just lazy or doesn't want to do that? Um, of course, it's not that simple, yes? Like, people who don't uh, create materials are just simply maybe shy or they, they are, like, they are not brave enough. But this is another reason, okay? So, another reason why teachers don't use materials um, created by other teachers, because they don't know um, what the legal status is, right? So whether they can borrow something, or maybe they are stealing, they don't know. Whether they can remix the materials, because they don't know um, copyright, yes? They don't know what, what, what the, the rights are to the materials. They, and they simply don't want to steal, yes? So that's why this is what they do. They just take materials that they have right to uh, from the publishing houses that, that they bought, like the course books and stuff. Um, all right, um, so these are the reasons, a few, just a few reasons why uh, teachers don't create materials, they don't uh, share materials with others. Um, and, um, and I have to tell you that it's very painful, yes? It's very painful because I, can, um, I really relate to them. Um, I can see that they uh, just have to in, put in a lot of hard work. To, um, to use the materials that they don't like, that they, um, the materials that are not suitable for their students, for example, but they are like ready-made and they have to be um, used by the teachers. So um, my, my reflection is um, that um, what, student, what teachers need uh, is more self-esteem, I mean higher self-esteem. And this is what I got when I joined the group of super teachers. Uh, as I say, um, the, the name is funny, yes? It's Polish Republic, Republic Super Teachers. Uh, we called themselves, ourselves super teachers, but this is just a joke, okay? We, we, we understand that there are lots of teachers like us who, um, who just um, are not open enough yet, who don't have the courage to, um, to just come out and show what they do, um, to be adventurous enough to create their own materials, to, create, to, to do their own stuff in school, just to discard the course books and start being creative, okay? So there is this group of 150 teachers uh, who um, are on Facebook in a, in a group. The group is closed because we want to feel safe um, we want to be able to talk about our successes and about our failures, okay? And we have become friends. Um, we have been together for seven years, and you have to see online what has happened over the years. Because um, at first, the group had this thera the therapeutical... Um, um, the purpose was therapeutical, right? That, that means that we, we went there when we had enough of our work in our schools, yes, yeah? so we could meet there and talk about it and maybe um, feel um, to relieve the stress. But now, uh, after so many years, we have created a lot of materials which we share online on our blog. 
Uh, we have a fan page on Facebook where we publish. Uh, we have podcasts. We have created um, a lot of um, lesson plans that are published and, and other teachers can use them. Uh, we have organized three years in a row a conference which uh, was online and it gathered 700 uh, participants over the whole day. And there were like 400,000 people uh, mentioning the conference on, online. So this is what happened, yes, after seven years. So the, the method of tiny steps that was mentioned before and the relationships that are important and the openness that the teachers need to share um, I think this is the best um, the line that um, can close my presentation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.